I could be looking out the window, enjoying the nice views of Florida around me. It's a beautiful day in South Florida, and the sun is shining bright, but I'm looking out at a different environment above me. Because my ride is approaching the Palm Beach International Airport, I'm eager to see the traffic pattern, because soon I'll be leaving the land of palm trees and will head to the sky. And right away, I see November 604 Foxtrot Romeo, a Frontier A321 arriving from Islip sporting America's green airline livery. This plane is high, and I'm not too far from the airport, which indicates to me that PBI is in an eastward flow. That plane needs to pass by the airport and turn around to the east. My assumptions are further justified as I watch this Delta 737-800 bound for JFK take off to the east. It's time to get out of this car and get into the airport terminal because I've got a boarding pass that needs to be scanned so I can go flying. All right, everybody, I'm ready for my next flight up to LaGuardia Airport. I am super excited as always. First, I'm dropping off a bag here. Okay, I'm gonna go through TSA right now. Then we'll be airside. Okay, I'm done with TSA and now I am airside. Let's head on down into the concourse. Okay, I'm in the gate area at the Palm Beach International Airport. It's a nice day out there. My aircraft is actually gonna be on the other side of the terminal. Just checking out the view over here. Got a nice 737 over there. I cannot go to the Delta Sky Club because I was not able to select it anymore as a choice benefit for this year. I also don't possess a credit card that gives me access, so I'm gonna have to go around the terminal. That's fine by me. I'm just most excited about getting on the airplane and flying. Those days are over. The minimum spend was increased to $20,000. I cannot spend $20,000 in one year to get into the Delta Sky Club, so unfortunately, I am not going to be able to go in. Previously, it was $15,000. Every year, I would spend around $12,000 or so, and I would do mileage runs to get to the $15,000 to become a Diamond Medallion and get this free Delta Sky Club access, but there's no way I can do mileage runs to get to $20,000 of spending in one year. So Delta is actually losing money from me because I'm not encouraged to spend more. Delta, if you want me to spend more money, if you lower your thresholds, I may be able to spend more. All right, I'm looking for a place to eat here in the terminal. I haven't done this in a long time. This is where I decided to have lunch in the concourse and I wound up eating some pizza. But I didn't finish that pizza because the A321 that will take me up to LaGuardia was about to land, so I rushed to a window to see it. The flight deck crew has checked in with the control tower and has received clearance to land on runway 10 left, the same runway it will take off on with you and me aboard. While it's exciting to see it land, what's even more exciting is the fact that it'll be flying on a right downwind leg to runway 22 tonight. That's why my seat is on the right side of the plane. More on that in a moment. Remember that Frontier A321 Sporting America's green airline livery that I saw when driving in? Here it is at the gate, getting ready for its return trip to Islip. Here's the 737 MAX 8 of Air Canada and a jet blue plane painted in brand new colors. But it's time to head to gate C4 to get up close and personal with my A321. Okay, here's the A321 that's going to take us up to LaGuardia today. I cannot wait to board. I'm very excited about this. I specifically chose a seat on the right-hand side of the airplane because the wind is coming from 180 degrees. Now, 180 degrees calls for right traffic to runway 22, so let's hope for the best today. Will we, or won't we, fly up the Hudson? My seat on the right side of the aircraft is just for that. Just before boarding, I got to see that Frontier plane again. Nice, I got to see Frontier on arrival and departure. Now back to this flight. We're ready for boarding, and I asked myself, will we or won't we fly up the Hudson? With the wind at LaGuardia out of the south, I'm certain we'll fly west of LaGuardia on the downwind leg before turning right to the north of LaGuardia to land on runway 22, but will the controllers tell us to follow the Hudson River or fly over Manhattan? These days, it seems like it just depends on who the approach controller is, as not every flight gets those Manhattan views on the right side of the plane, but all I can do is hope and not feel bad for selecting a seat on the right side of the plane. We're all set for a pushback onto the ramp, not the taxiway system, but the apron around the terminal area. We'll enter the taxiway system once the tug is removed, and then we can taxi under our own power. 
Once we taxi under the control of a ground controller in the 248 foot tall control tower, this flight will be pointed to the west, because it's that direction that will lead us to runway 10 left, a 10,000 foot long runway that heads nearly 110 degrees, hence the number 10 designation. It's got a smaller sister runway to its south, 10R or 10 right. Under the guidance of Palm Beach Ground Control, we taxi to taxiway Charlie and take it to the end to get to runway 10 left. Each time I take this route out of PBI, my flight has not been met with any ground traffic delays. With very light traffic, we cross the crosswind runway, and it's probably the expectation of everyone in the plane that will be in the air soon, but come on, we're headed to LaGuardia, so there has to be some delay, right? Well, even though there is no traffic on the ground here at PBI, ATC has issued us a slight delay on the ground before becoming airborne due to flow control to LaGuardia. This means that we had to stop prior to the runway for about 10 minutes, but what better place to stop than outside Gulfstream's hangar with an array of expensive private jets? The ground controller has us monitor the tower frequency, and the tower controller has told us to enter the runway after waiting about 10 minutes. Sitting on the right-hand side of the plane gave me a nice view of the final approach course to our runway. Runway 10 left is being used for both arrivals and departures, so I'm looking out to see if I could see any airplanes on approach. Of course, we'd have to get out before they land since we're taking the runway now, but I didn't see any planes out there, and the tower issued us takeoff clearance without even coming to a stop. You'll notice an Embraer Praetor on Taxiway Lima on the other side of the runway. The south side of the airport is home to three FBOs, or fixed base operators, which handle smaller aircraft like that Embraer, and you'll see many of these airplanes on their ramps as we pick up our speed, including a rare, large, and private Boeing 757, which rivals in size to this A321. Every climb out has to have a game plan, so let's start talking about it now before we become airborne. We're going to fly the Slides to RNAV Departure Procedure, which states that our initial departure heading should be 99 degrees, which is basically straight out, runway heading. But once we reach 520 feet, we should proceed to a fix called Carmen, which is practically straight ahead and around 6 nautical miles away from PBI Airport. Carmen needs to be crossed at or above 2,500 feet, and once we reach it, we need to turn to the northeast on a 51 degree heading to a fix called Ryder, about 9 miles northeast of PBI. We need to cross Ryder at or above 4,000 feet, and once over Ryder, we need to keep the heading to Reback, which is around 13 miles northeast of PBI. Then continue on that heading to Slides, which is around 25 miles northeast of PBI, and we need to cross it at or above 10,000 feet. And then on a 49 degree heading, we can proceed to Fixus, which is around 35 miles northeast of PBI, and we need to cross it at or above 12,000 feet. We're now leaving the airspace of the controller on the top floor of the tower and are told to switch to Departure Control, who will monitor us on the slides to departure as we cross Interstate 95, which on this side of the plane heads down to Miami. On the other side of the plane, it heads north to the Hulton Woodstock border, crossing between Maine and Canada. Interstate 95 will parallel our route to our left the entire flight, except when in New York, when we'll be flying over it again. The first portion of this flight will be on a water route, and that's exactly what the Slides to Departure sets us up for, flying northeast over the water. We're about to cross the first body of water, the Lake Worth Lagoon, which is part of the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway System, which runs along the coast. Just past that is the barrier island of Palm Beach, which is a narrow strip of land followed by the Atlantic Ocean. And that's it for land sightings until we reach the land portion of our flight, which will be seen after heading northeast. If we were to keep this straight out heading, we'd be flying across the Atlantic Ocean, and the next site of land would be Western Sahara in Africa. Not that this aircraft has the range to get there. My ticket says LaGuardia, so after a few miles, we'll be turning towards New York. And here's that left turn at Carmen, which is six nautical miles west of Palm Beach, and we're turning to the northeast to follow the rest of the slides to departure. From this side of the plane, it's mostly ocean views, and I can see the shallow waters of the Bahamas, but I'm not just looking down. I'm looking up, and out there I spotted this JetBlue A320 flying over the water from Fort Lauderdale to Charleston. To help me see where I am, I decided to turn on the map on the screen in front of me, but when I clicked on Flight Tracker, this happened. Thumbs down. And thumbs down for the clouds at this altitude, but thankfully they did not last for too long, helping me spot another JetBlue A320, this time flying from Hartford to Miami on a seasonal route. Here's an Air France 777 from Paris to Cancun. We eventually made landfall around the Carolina Beach area of North Carolina, and I got a nice view of the shoreline again looking up the East Coast. From this point onward, we'll be over the land. However, for a short period as we approach New York City from the southwest, we'll be over Lower New York Bay, which empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Down there is Jacksonville, North Carolina, which has a population of 72,000, a lot less than the better-known Jacksonville, Florida. 
down there, we see Greenville, North Carolina, a city similar in size to Jacksonville, North Carolina, but just because we're over land doesn't mean that we should limit ourselves to looking down all the time. A look up here reveals an American 777 flying above us from its hub in Charlotte all the way to Frankfurt, Germany. I just love flying. As we approach the Chesapeake Bay area and the sun begins to set, this promises a night approach to LaGuardia. Shortly after this, we began to start on down on the Cory 4 arrival procedure for arrivals from the southwest of New York City, just like us. There goes Atlantic City as we descend over New Jersey. On the Cory arrival, we flew through the clouds, so I didn't film it at all until we broke out over Monmouth County, New Jersey, approaching New York Bay. Let's get into this approach. Now, today the wind is coming from the south, and as I mentioned earlier, that means that we'll be passing to the west of LaGuardia. This will allow us to head north past the airport, then make a right turn to land on runway 22. With runway 13 as the departure runway, departing traffic climbs to the east of LaGuardia Airport, which allows western airspace to be reserved for arrivals on what's called the Darwin Leg. But where west of LaGuardia will we be specifically because the island of Manhattan is also west of LaGuardia. We won't go too far west, like west of the Hudson River, because that airspace is reserved for Newark and Teterboro airports, but where will we head north? Well, I'll give you a spoiler alert, and I'll let you know that this evening, the approach controller is vectoring aircraft up the Hudson River, which means that passengers on the right side will get the great Manhattan view. I made the right choice in choosing a seat on the right side of the aircraft for this flight. We're now flying over New York Bay, and in the distance is the Atlantic Ocean. We're headed right for the Verrazano Bridge, which connects Staten Island and Brooklyn, and the approach controller, a controller at the New York Tracon on Long Island, has set us up to fly up the Hudson as we descend to 4,000 feet, the altitude from which the amazing views will happen. I'll move forward to the part where we make our first sighting of New York City at Coney Island in Brooklyn. There it is, Coney Island, which is actually not an island, but connected to the larger other parts of Brooklyn. In the distance, jutting out into the water is the Rockaway Peninsula, and the closest point to us is Breezy Point. This is actually part of Queens, as a part of Queens that's separated from Brooklyn by Jamaica Bay juts out under Brooklyn. I'm pointing the camera down to see the Verrazano Bridge, but we're actually flying directly over it so it can't be seen. The dark area down there is the Diker Beach Park and Golf Course. We're perfectly sequenced behind the aircraft in front of us, and approach control has slowed us down, so we fit in. Aircraft behind us are also slowing down to fit in behind us. From here, we can see the many neighborhoods of Brooklyn and the grid system that New York City is known for. As instructed by the controller, the nose of this plane is pointed to a point just west of downtown Manhattan, and from the flight deck, Manhattan can be seen up ahead and to the right. Sometimes I wish we could turn to the left of this point for the view, but that would bring us closer to Newark's airspace. And we can't get any lower, because that airspace is reserved for leisure flights flying up and down over the upper New York Bay and Hudson River. Those planes are actually on a different frequency called a Unicom, where they self-announce their position to each other. The dark area below is Gowanus Bay, at the mouth of the Gowanus Canal. The bay is part of Upper New York Bay, which momentarily will transition to the Hudson River, which continues north for 315 miles. The first part of Manhattan is coming into sight. Governor's Island, which is a 172-acre island just off the south tip of the main Manhattan Island. And guys, get ready for this. We're perfectly positioned for one of the best views of Manhattan at night that I've ever seen.
Wow, that was phenomenal. But let's not lose focus on what's going on from an air traffic perspective. In the distance is LaGuardia Airport, and the only way to get there is to make a series of right-hand turns, and those turns will be issued by the approach controller. As I talk, you'll notice a series of right turns that we make. The controller issues these turns based upon the traffic in front of us that's also making these right-hand turns. The controller will also clear us down to lower altitudes, but that's harder to notice, but we will be descending as we continue along with a great view of the Bronx. On this flight, we got to see every borough except Staten Island. Today, we'll literally be making a complete U-turn around the Bronx. Our downwind leg is now, then our right base leg will be just north of the Bronx in lower Westchester County, then we'll follow the path of I-95 down the Bronx's east side, all the way down to runway 22 at LaGuardia. I know we're at the end of the Bronx because of the presence of Van Cortlandt Park, the dark area at the bottom of the screen, and the controller is having us turn to the right, which brings us to the east in the lower extremities of Westchester County. Specifically, we're over Yonkers now. This turn at this position is an indicator to me that LaGuardia is moderately busy in terms of arrivals. If there were more planes on approach to LaGuardia, we would have been issued this right turn farther north, as far as White Plains, New York. If there were less planes on approach to LaGuardia, we would have been issued this right turn further south, staying within the limits of the Bronx. But we were issued the turn somewhere between the two, which is pretty average for LaGuardia. I can't tell you how many times I've made this turn in this spot in the past. Now, not only is the controller issuing planes flying north up the Hudson turns to the right, but is also handling traffic coming straight into runway 22 from northern and eastern origins. Arrivals like us need to be sequenced properly between those, but the majority of flights to LaGuardia follow the path that we just took from New York Bay. As we fly over New Rochelle at the southeastern part of Westchester County, we're ready to be issued our final turns to the final approach course to runway 22, which will bring us back into the Bronx again. We're where we need to be regarding fitting in with the traffic ahead, and the controller has so much work to do because there are many planes behind us. But we say goodbye to our approach controller at this point, and we're handed off to the controller on the top floor of the LaGuardia Air Traffic Control Tower at the airport so that we can get clearance to land on runway 22. With the wind from the south, we'll have a headwind component of 40 degrees to our left side, and the tour of New York City that we received was all part of getting to the point where we can land into the wind. While as much as I'd love for the views to be intentional, it's merely functional and are not only dictated by flights to and from LaGuardia, but also by flights to and from the other airports, as well as the aircraft that are just transitioning the airspace. Like I mentioned before, we could not be much further west of the Hudson River due to Newark's airspace, but we had to be below a certain altitude to accommodate flights taking off from Newark, heading to the northeast that fly over Manhattan and the Bronx. Departures from LaGuardia Airport off of runway 13 climb out to the east, which is why we pass by LaGuardia to the west, but once those departing flights are high enough, they can fly over flights landing at LaGuardia if they're headed to the west or south. On top of all these complexities are flights inbound to JFK from the north and west. It's complex, but fortunately, we were afforded a great view tonight. We're over Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx and are coming up on Co-op City, the largest residential development in the USA, and on its far side is Interstate 95. Remember when we saw it down in Palm Beach? It's the sixth longest interstate highway in the country. It'll be under us momentarily, then head out to the west towards the George Washington Bridge, where it will continue into New Jersey. If we were to go on 95 right now from this point and end our journey where we started at the Palm Beach International Airport, it would take around 18 hours. That is a lot longer than our airborne journey. On the other side of the plane, passengers can see the Long Island Sound, and they'll get a nice view of the Throgs Neck and Whitestone Bridges. All the passengers on both sides of this aircraft will see the East River before touchdown, as the beginning of the runway is on a pier that juts out into the East River. And should I really say all passengers? Well, all passengers that have a window. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that I noticed some passengers that had their window shades down, and we were flying up the Hudson River with views of Manhattan. Why? I think they need to watch this channel so they know what they're missing, and the next time, maybe they'll have their window shades up. Do you subscribe to this notion? I hope you do, because that's what this channel is all about. And speaking of subscribing, if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on joining me on these fully narrated flights. We're all set to land on runway 22. It's been a great flight. Today's score is 100%, and I'm basing that just on the route we took and what we saw. What was the service like? I don't know. If you want to know what service is like on a Delta A321, there are many other channels showcasing things like seat pitch, legroom, and how far down the tray table goes. In my opinion, the view out the window is worth so much more than that. Let's land at LaGuardia Airport on runway 22.
All right, I'm working my way to the baggage claim area here. One of the newer concourses at LaGuardia Airport. It's a lot of walking. Whew, this is a lot of walking. Well, what's making up for the long walk is the fact that we landed on runway 22 with right traffic and flew up the Hudson. I am so happy that I sat on the right-hand side of the aircraft. It really paid off by making a really, really good seat selection by looking at the wind. Now, of course, it's not guaranteed. There have been instances where my aircraft did not fly up the Hudson. We actually flew up over Manhattan, but this time I got lucky. It's cold here. I'm going to be bundling up before I go outside. The only thing I missed from 4,000 feet was the cold, as I was in a climate-controlled plane enjoying the best view New York City has to offer. See you all very soon, everybody.